plugin of the week is the EOSIS AirEQ Premium. This is uh, an exceptional EQ um, by uh, Fabrice Gabriel, and uh, who also you know uh, his name because he does a lot of work with Slate. And um, so this EQ comes from uh, his own personal work, and this is perhaps one of the most in-depth, powerful EQs for a, a kind of analog style setup in terms of the way that you look in the knobs. Uh, so sometimes with many of the features, all of the um, EQ work is done graphically, and, uh, and it gives you, you know, some kind of controls with modifier keys and things like that. But this is an exceptionally well thought out EQ, and I wanted to kind of go through some of the features and the way that it's set up. This is um, just so feature rich. When you start digging into all the different options and parameters, you really begin to understand uh, the power of it. Now, uh, what you have um, on the basics, let's just kind of go over some of uh, the basic setup and the different bands, and then we'll kind of work our way through everything. Uh, to start off with, you have an input gain and an output gain. In between, you have uh, an earth um, EQ and an air EQ. So these are ways of kind of tilting um, low frequency energy and high frequency energy um, into the sound. So that adds like a, that's great for mastering, but also great for individual sounds, particularly on the low end for like kick drums and basses and things like that. You have a high pass filter on the low end here with Q control and uh, um, dB per octave switching. I'll, I'll kind of go through some of the options there. You have five bands of bell curve uh, parametric EQ. Band one and band five also have the ability to go to a shelving style EQ instead of a bell curve EQ. Uh, and then you have a high or a low pass filter, excuse me, uh, which does the same as before. Now, there are many features that are added in along with this. You have an EQ in and out, as I mentioned, the output uh, gain stage. You have a strength control, and the strength control allows you to take the existing EQ band by band and increase uh, its power or amount or decrease it uh, from 0 to 150%. And this gives you uh, quite a lot of extra control. Um, in addition to working with just the individual bands. So you're not grabbing gain controls and trying to bring them all down together. This sort of gives you the ability to do that all at once. There's a unique feature here, which um, encompasses something that you don't really find in any EQ. You find variations of this, but nothing that's quite so exacting like this. Um, you have what's called a character control. And this is a way of controlling the characteristic of the actual bell curve itself. Uh, one um, way to do this is to switch towards the fire. So if I were to just boost the signal here and you were to watch this boosting, uh, what would happen is you will notice that as I go towards fire, it starts to focus or, um, the actual curve uh, bell uh, width. As I go towards water, what it does is it flattens out the top. Now, flat top EQs, um, there's a flat top EQ, I believe, that goes back to Clark Technic and their graphic EQs. They had a flat top EQ, but that was a parametric EQ, and there were all kinds of phase discrepancies and weird issues that sort of came along with that. Although it had a smoothness, this does it uh, phase-free. And what's really cool about this is that when you're working with individual instruments, it allows you to more softly or musically manage something like the low end of a kick drum. Or if you have a range of notes on the bass that you kind of want to bring out where you can sort of do it in a more musical way, where if you had a bell curve, you might find that certain notes in the middle would get more pronounced than others. Um, otherwise, uh, with basses, you end up working more with like shelving style EQs and things like that. Um, when working with the EQ, there's a bunch of modifier keys and ways of kind of working around with a different sound. So for example, if you're working with any parameter and you alt click on it, it will reset it. You notice that when I touch any parameter, it automatically activates that band. So you're not having to turn it on or adjusting the gain and then having to go back up. So there's many smart controls and there's also parameters that you can adjust. If you're working with something like a frequency, for example, and you hold the uh, command key, uh, then uh, that's in uh, Mac command key, which would equivocate, I believe, to control key in Windows, then um, that gives you a fine adjustment control. And again, the alt or option key would get you to reset. 
uh, if you're working and adjusting with frequency and you hold the shift key, then you get what's uh, called a uh, frequency finder. And if you add that along with the alt key or option key, then you can adjust the character on the individual band um, on its own. So in other words, this is a global control allowing you to adjust the character across all of the bands, but you also have the ability to make it so that an individual band uh, can have its own character adjustment or be free from that. And this is where you start to get into just tons of different options and uh, um, uh, layers to what's going on. So for example, let's just start with some of the modifier settings here. If I'm working with this and I want a sharper cue than what's here, it gives me two options on the switch, which is a 6 dB or 12 dB per octave. But if I uh, right click on this, I can actually make it all the way down to a switch that goes between 24 and 36. Um, if I want, I'm just going to display the graphic on the EQ here just so you can kind of see it. Uh, there's a bunch of um, view options up here that work with the uh, spectrum analyzer here. So I'll kind of uh, swing this frequency down. So that wasn't a resonance. That happened to be something else that I was doing here. And we'll kind of reset it. So this gives me the ability to switch between um, different uh, tightness characteristics. Plus with the Q, I can actually resonate that band and kind of work with it um, accordingly. So that gives, um, again, you know, some really um, cool options as far as the way that I control the filters. If I right click on any uh, band here, then I can apply my equalization left, right. Uh, or if I'm operating in MS mode instead of stereo mode, then uh, what would happen is that option would switch to mid side. So that would allow me to control EQ on a band by band basis for the left or right channel. So that would be what is displayed and what I see. Now, there are a couple different band types. There's a bell curve and a shelving EQ, which is available on this particular band. And then there's also what's called a steep bell. Steep bell is a way of working with an EQ that perhaps has more of a, like a very tight cue, more of a notching kind of characteristic. Uh, whereas if I work with a standard bell curve, it's going to give me something along these lines. So that gives me an additional control. So again, that's sort of right clicking here. Um, I can actually set the character to be used on its own or follow the global character uh, uh, setting. Um, and, uh, and I can include or exclude this from the strength behavior. So if I wanted, like for example, if I'm notching something out, of a particular area, I, I don't want the strength control necessarily to take that away because maybe I'm finding some kind of tone or resonance that I'm trying to notch out. And that gives me a nice ability to kind of do that um, without all of that. So each of the bands has the ability to adjust all of these different uh, setups and uh, settings. So as you kind of work with uh, some of the different parameters here, you'll, you'll find that um, you'll quickly kind of get adjusted to what's going on. So again, here, if I go to shift EQ, what ends up happening, uh, shift on the frequency, what will end up happening is that I'm going to get some, uh, um, the ability to focus on that particular EQ, right? So if I just uh, solo up here. Do you know how many people on your car? Right, so I can uh, work with that and focus in and find a particular frequency, and I could do that at any time. If I hold the Option key, then what that does is it solos up that band. Do you know how many people own your car? And that allows me to kind of focus in on any particular aspect of the sound and, and kind of dial it in. So the Shift and the Alt keys are a great way of um, enhancing the features or capabilities where you can find frequencies quickly or kind of work with them. So <laughs> again, there's kind of so much here. I'm not sure exactly how this ended up over here. I must have uh, slid that up by accident. Um, what you always have here is our, uh, plenty of levels of undo and redo. So as you're working through things, if you find that you're uh, making mistakes or whatever and you want to go back, uh, then you could kind of work with it from that perspective. Uh, you can display the EQ curve. Otherwise, it'll give you a, a light graphic. Um, you can have the meters turned on and off. What you have here is input-output meters over on the left. And then on the right, what you'll see is a, a an EQ um, overall gain. So as you're adding gain within a particular frequency band, you'll notice that, and you could see it actually right there. So as I'm working with this, it's showing that there's an increase in gain overall. You notice that this is steeper than what you're seeing here. So as you're working and EQing, you can actually see an accounting 
for how much that relatively brings the overall level and then you can adjust the output gain accordingly to kind of match whatever that is so that the overall gain is relatively the same and that becomes it makes it more of a true measure for the way that you actually use the EQ because um, uh, quite often especially when you're getting into additive EQ it's very easy to make it just louder and just louder within particular particular frequency areas and then of course louder almost always sounds better and jumps out of the speakers and you're excited and really all you've done is just kind of made it louder more or less within different frequency areas it's obviously different but having that balance gives you a, a better real measure for what the EQ is doing positive or negative um, so you can work with that uh, you could turn the analyzer on or off um, you can have the analyzer monitor the input. If it's uh, if this is checked or X'd here with the EQ, then the then the frequency analyzer will show with the EQ added in after the input level. And if that's off, then it's showing you the input frequency response, but not with the EQ added in. You could switch this to output, which shows you the output post output gain. Uh, so that gives you uh, some options there. You have fast or slow settings uh, for the frequency response graph. Uh, and an infinite control, which, oh, okay, that's a, how, I think that's a hold on, on the uh, frequency response graph. I could be wrong about that. I'm not exactly sure. Um, have an AB setup for copying AB. And we have settings control that allow you to go back and do a full reset on the EQ, which I'm going to do very quickly there. I have display options. Uh, so I can, you know, um, you know, display the cue as octaves. I can uh, hide the band names. You can actually rename each individual band instead of calling it a bell curve. You can give it like a specific name. So you can just kind of click on those things. Um, uh, you can have the display, the values displayed all the time or only when you're adjusting the setting. Uh, there's all kinds of other upon this contextual help. So if you like the, if you notice in the bottom left, you'll see as I'm kind of tapping through things, you may see some like what uh, an alt key is doing or what a control key is doing when I'm clicking on something and those commands will kind of come up there in the corner. Uh, knob function. This is kind of cool because when working with different things, um, you can actually have the gain stepped in increments. This sometimes uh, for reproducibility purposes, allows you to um, consciously work within particular dB steps. You'll find a lot of mastering EQs are stepped in half dB increments um, uh, along something along those lines, and that gives you some uh, repeatability. And that's for hardware, but sometimes having that in the software um, kind of gives you some measure of control and repeatability, quick repeatability. And so that's kind of do uh, one. Um, way to go with that and then on the Q shaping um, that you know you can have coarse or fine settings or none which just gives you full Q control um, the uh, auto on just means that when you touch a band like I start to adjust the gain it automatically turns the band on and uh, so uh, those are the things you can also create a default setup so you have loads and loads of controls here uh, this actually removes the frequency analysis section if you don't like to do that like this is one thing that a lot of people um, have come to me with where they say, you know, I want an EQ that actually where I, I'm not adjusting everything with the graphics. And so I'm just using my ears and really paying attention and not having my um, decisions influenced by what I'm seeing on a frequency response graph. And that that's a, a great one because you have plenty of powerful control and amazing uh, detailed shaping capabilities. And sometimes the visual can kind of offset your uh, your brain a little bit. You could also have the frequencies kind of work to musical note values. Um, and uh, so as you shift the frequency, it'll say that's a B5, C6, etc. And it will sort of step its way through that. And that can sometimes be handy if you're searching for particular notes. Uh, sometimes this happens where pickups are not particularly calibrated well on a guitar or a bass. I've seen this happen on basses where a particular note will just kind of disappear. Um, in which case you can go in and you can find that particular frequency and boost it to kind of level out that note within the sound. So it's kind of crazy, but uh, that, that actually becomes quite a useful feature. So there's loads and loads to work with, this whole preset thing, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, but in addition to being so feature-rich with all the things that I've just discussed, it's also a very powerful sounding EQ. So I want to kind of uh, show you a couple things with it and in particular focus on some of the character settings so you can get a sense of what's going on. So what I have this is uh, I have this on a mix bus here 
And uh, maybe what I'm going to start with is just kind of working with a little bit of drums and bass here, because I want to focus on a little bit of low end shaping and show how, how we can kind of work with this. So I'm going to put the EQ curve on here so you can just kind of see a little bit of what's going on. And I'm going to start with a low cut, and I'm going to kind of work, obviously, with a lower frequency than this. And uh, kind of shift the cue in a little bit here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to focus this a little bit better. So I can kind of focus right on that resonance there. Now if I... Uh, let me kind of... That's that's like some pretty low frequencies there. Uh, probably a little bit uh, too low for doing this. But here what I can do is... Find that low end resonant frequency. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the shift key. Right, so I, I'm over resonating it there on purpose, hopefully not blowing anybody's subwoofers up. And then I can control the cue there to kind of tighten that up. And then uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm also going to do like a little bit of a shelving EQ. So um, maybe to help kind of shape that uh, low mid there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this down a little bit, uh, maybe a, a dB or so, and I'm going to shift that frequency down. Again, I can kind of find my um, my resonant cutoff area here. I'm going to, so uh, you could see here the display of the frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, so I'm kind of looking for a little bit of the mucky area, which is showing up like around 236. And then I can resonate that low end a little bit better. And that helps to kind of clean up that, that low end a little bit. Now, um, one other thing that I'm just going to play with here just to kind of see what how it works. I'm going to work with the air setting up on the top. And this is like a nice counter to a low end, a low sub frequency boost. So you can see how this this sort of tilts down into you know lower frequency, almost all the way down to 2K there. Now what's interesting here is I could kind of play with this uh, with this air and and on on the frequency and uh, what I'll do here is up on the top. And so this is almost like a mastering here from my uh, stem on on the high end here, so you could see. Uh, I'm going to take this air thing out just so I can kind of see. So that's, this is showing me the net EQ. Um, so I'm going to resonate this a little bit. You can hear as a point there that really...
brings out that snap of the snare. So I'm going to start there and then kind of back off on that resonance a little bit. Focus that in and let's just put that Notice how that, that top end is so clear and focused. A little bit, you know, just tighter. But doesn't lose presence. Sometimes I think there's a, a, a little bit of a thing here where you can get carried away with that super super high end, and then just end up, end up adding kind of noise that that leaves the um, high frequencies unfocused. So this was just kind of to give you a quick idea of what this EQ sounds like. Uh, I'm not sure if if I just this is sort of a really bad test, which is just to throw in the guitars and see what I did here because I really focused on the drums. But um, what's amazing about this EQ is that it's not it's not a CPU hog. You can pretty much use this. Uh, it has the quality and um, and the musicality of something that works incredibly well in a mastering situation. But it's not so big of a CPU hit that you can't use it on a track by track basis. So maybe what I want to do here is I'm just going to move this over. Uh, over to here and then uh, focus on something with the guitars here. Uh, do something guitar specific so I can kind of um, uh, go here and uh, show you a little bit of the character control because I didn't really use that in there. There weren't any um, other boosts that necessarily called for that. So I want to focus on that a little bit. So uh, let's uh, just see here. Let me just kind of do a full reset here. And so let's just say that I wanted to give this a little bit of a low um, boost. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, kind of work with a, uh, a low mid frequency area. And uh, so let me find something first. So I want to work on a kind of on the low end here. So I'm just kind of finding that with my shift and alt keys to kind of solo that band up. And uh, we'll show the the EQ here. So so one of the problems there's two things that you can do here. You can focus that low end. So it really narrows in on a particular frequency, or I can give it a more musical character. And what this does now, if I start to adjust the, the Q here, notice how it starts to get more musical sounding. because it's covering a wider range of frequencies. And where you can hear that, that like really particularly resonates at a tone. And I can adjust that on an individual basis. So if I wanted to, uh, I can actually uh, focus on that band have it uh, a per band character. Now that character control shows up there. And if I want to uh, adjust, uh, hold on one second here. Uh, that's a fine tune adjust, I'm sorry. Uh, there we go. If I hold the shift key here, now I can adjust the character towards water to flatten it out or towards fire to raise it up. Sorry, I'll just slip in there on my shortcuts for a second. So with the shift key on the band, I'm now controlling the character on the individual band. 
And then I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that is somewhat similar, but up in a higher mid frequency. So I'll I'll focus on something maybe a little bit closer to the 2K range to maybe kind of counterbalance this a little bit, and then uh, and that'll give it a little bit of edge. And I think I'm also gonna do um, a, a character control on this. So I'm gonna put a per band character on this and then uh, work with that a little bit so I can kind of flatten that out a little bit. So let's just see. And uh, so just trying to find a tonal center there for it. So I can see here my gain after I just gave you a lecture on this. I can make up on the output level. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a uh, high cut here on that. Something uh, maybe a little bit sharper to kind of give it a little bit more focus. Kind of resonate the cue on that. Shift that frequency up. Do the same on the low end. So to give it a, like a nice focus, let's mix that in with the drums, see what that sounds like. I'm sure on this I didn't, uh... no, actually my net EQ is actually down a little bit on So you can hear all that, uh, how musical, how clean that sounds. It's like a great, this is just on a couple of stems here, um, but amazing controls. And uh, when you really start digging into this, uh, the character really is incredible. Um, and I didn't even get into the strength control. This is one of those things where a demo can just go on for hours and hours and hours and uh, and worth every minute of it. There's so much in here, very feature rich. And it seems like no matter how much you think you know about the EQ, as you start using it more, you start to uncover other settings or things and ways of using it uh, that uh, you didn't do. Really powerful EQ, really uh, incredibly flexible uh, and uh, great work uh, by Fabrice and uh, Great plugin. So uh, the EOSIS Air EQ Premium, um, one of the uh, uh, top-notch EQ for any uh, plugin collection, and that is the plugin of the week.